These are all my settings for my ZV-1, which I think are not only the best for image quality, but also allow me to quickly access specific commonly used features on the fly. Although this would be helpful in any niche that you're in, it's particularly important in cooking videos because I don't have the time to be messing with my camera while cooking and potentially burning the food. I'll have timestamps in the description if you already understand how to use the ZV-1 and just wanna skip around to those parts that you wanna watch. But if you have no clue on how to use this camera, I'd recommend watching this video in the order in which I'm presenting the information. So on the camera, when you hit the menu button, you can use these buttons on the back of the camera to navigate up, down, left, or right, and press the button in the middle to make your selection. If you open something and you wanna go back, hit the menu button again. If you already made a bunch of changes to your camera and you wanna start from scratch like I'm going to do right now, hit the menu button and then at the top, scroll to the right till you hit that little yellow briefcase looking thing. Then scroll over to page six of six and select settings reset and then hit initialize. You'll need to select your language, set your area, date, and time. The camera will then turn on and be in intelligent auto photo mode. So before we can change our settings, you wanna hit the mode button up on top and make sure that you select movie mode. We will then scroll all the way down and select manual exposure. This is gonna give us full control of your exposure settings like ISO, shutter, and aperture. It's okay if you have no clue what this is. At the end of this video, I'll explain this in a super simple way to understand. And after that, I'll go over another way where you could basically turn your ZV-1 into a smartphone where it'll do all of the work for you in a way that you can simply press one button to make your image darker or brighter. Just stick with me for setting up the rest of your actual camera quality settings and buttons first. Then later we'll set the camera up in my kitchen and we'll go over how to mess with all of those things for exposure, as well as that smartphone ZV-1 setting. So the first thing I'm gonna select is my image resolution and frame rate. Hit the menu button and then select the second tab on the top with the purple camera. On page one of nine, we'll select file format. I shoot all of my content in XAVCS 4K. Below that, select record settings. I personally shoot 24p at 100 megabits. I do see a noticeable drop in image quality when I'm shooting in 60 megabits. Most movies and films shoot 24 frames per second for that more cinematic look, and television and things like the news are filmed in 30 frames per second. I like 24p, but you do you. And depending on where in the world you chose as your area or location, you might even see 25p as an option. If I ever wanted to shoot a slow motion shot, I'll go into my file format settings and I'll switch to XAVCS HD. And for my recording settings, I would only choose 120 frames per second at 100 megabits. Again, I do see a noticeable drop in quality when shooting 60 megabits, and the others like 50 and 16 megabit options are even worse. But when it comes to filming in general, my camera is set to XAVCS 4K at 24p, 100 megabits. It is the best quality that the camera can shoot at, period. So one thing about this camera is that if it's left recording or on for too long, it will start to get hot and eventually shut off from overheating. You can adjust the auto power off setting by going to tab five, which is the yellow briefcase, scroll to page two of six and select auto power off temp. Switch this from standard to high and then select okay. For audio, let's go to tab two with the purple camera and on page three of nine, you wanna make sure that audio recording is on. Audio level display is on as well, so you can monitor this on your screen while recording. Wind noise reduction should never be on because it sounds like trash. And for audio recording levels, this is depending on if you're using a mic and what kind. Generally speaking, I'd say to set it between 20 and 25 with no mic attached, around 10 with a shotgun mic, and around five with a lav mic. Do some tests and just make sure that you're not hitting the red or zero dBs. This means that your audio is blowing out and there's no way to fix that. I try and keep my audio between negative 12 and negative three. If it's lower, you can always go in and bring that up while editing. And if it's way too low, you can still turn that up when editing, 
but you'll start to hear a little hiss or you know that little hissing noise. For focus settings, let's go over to tab two with the purple camera and then on page two, you'll want to change the AF drive speed to normal and the track sensitivity to standard. I noticed when I had these set to default, which were fast and responsive, the autofocus would oftentimes bug out or it would sort of like twitch or flutter or look super jumpy, even if I was just filming someone standing there talking on camera. Move over to tab one with the red camera and on page five, we want to make sure that our focus mode is set to continuous autofocus. For focus area, let's select this and change it to wide for now. A majority of the times when I'm filming, I use zone. And I'm working on another video that will talk about the different focus settings along with how to shoot manual focus with the ZV-1. I'll have a link in the description when that goes live or consider joining to be a member of my channel to support me as a creator and you get perks like early access to my videos. So next let's talk about color. You can find this on tab one with the red camera and on page nine of 12. White balance is set to auto and this is the one setting that I would say you don't wanna be on auto. If you're just starting out and you just wanna get going as soon as possible, auto is okay. What's weird is I actually think that underwater auto is better than the auto white balance option if you're gonna pick one. I'll have another video breaking down white balance but for the people that already understand this setting, let me just quickly nip this in the bud. So I select the Kelvin setting and I change it to 5000K and then I'll set my light kit to 5,000K to match. I also changed all of the light bulbs in my apartment kitchen to 5,000K light bulbs to match as well. So back in the menu, keep dynamic range optimization on auto and creative style on standard. Picture effects will stay off. For picture profile, if you're just starting out, I just keep this off. This is in itself a whole nother video about picture profiles. And it's for people that wanna put fancy LUTs or looks or filters on their videos. I shoot in a custom picture profile that looks like this when it's straight out of the camera. And then I'll add a LUT that looks like this. I customize my PP1 profile and you can find my exact picture profile settings in the description of this video. So now that we have all of the main overall camera settings dialed in, let's customize our buttons on the camera for quick access to commonly used settings so that we don't have to go through that crazy menu to find these things while you're cooking. Back in the menu, let's go to tab two with the purple camera, and then we'll scroll to page eight of nine. The first option is for photo mode. We wanna go down to the second one with the film strip and select that. Here's how I customize the buttons on the camera. The first button on the list is number one, which is the little trash can labeled C2. I use this for steady shot, which is located on page 10 of 17. This is basically image stabilization and standard steady shot gives you a little stability and active will give you more stability, but it does zoom or crop in your shot a little bit to compensate for that. I toggle this on and off a lot, and I like to use active steady shot when filming things handheld without a gimbal. Button two is the big one in the middle of that little turny wheel thing. And I like to change this to the focus magnifier, which is on page eight of 17. This is great for checking and making sure that what you're filming is in focus. When you tap this button, it'll digitally zoom in on your frame. It's a lifesaver when shooting manual focus, and I'll talk about that in another video. Button three is the left button on the turn wheel thing. And I like to set this to face eye priority autofocus on page two of 17. This is something that I also toggle on and off a lot as well. The ZV-1 has amazing face eye autofocus tracking that I use whenever I'm filming myself talking to the camera. However, there might be times that my face or someone else's might be in my shot and I don't want the camera to focus on them. I like to be able to quickly turn this on and off. Button four is on the right button of the turn wheel thing. And I like to set this to ISO, which can be found on page four of 17. We'll talk more about this later. If you scroll to the right on page two of two, there's one button option for the top of the camera labeled C1. I like to change this to product showcase set which can be found on page nine of 17. I use product showcase a lot and I use it often when I'm going to hold something up close to the camera. It'll automatically focus on what I'm holding up and then smoothly transition back to me when I go to eat it. You do need to stop recording in order to toggle product showcase mode off and on. 
It also doesn't work with active steady shot mode. So now that we have all of our buttons configured on the camera, let's talk about the function menu. When you press the FN button on the back, it brings up 12 function settings that you can select and customize. This makes it much faster to locate and change these settings compared to hitting menu and then searching in all of the different tabs and multiple pages in each tab for commonly used functions or settings that we couldn't designate as a button on the camera. To customize your function menu, hit the menu button and then select tab two, which is the purple camera, scroll to the right to get to page eight of nine and select function menu set. You'll see two function menus. The top 12 are for if your camera is in photo mode. You'll see a little icon that looks like some photos of the mountains. The bottom 12 are for if your camera is in movie mode and you'll see a little icon that looks like a film strip. I'm gonna focus on the movie mode function menu and we'll work on the top six functions from left to right first and then the bottom six from left to right. So let's highlight the first box. I like to set this to audio record level, which is on page eight of 12. This is great to have here to just quickly adjust your levels when you need to. To the right of that is focus mode on page two of 15. Here we can toggle between continuous autofocus and manual. To the right of that is focus area located on page two of 15. This is where we can select the different focus areas. Like I mentioned earlier, go with wide, but I do like to use zone. I got another video on that later. Become a channel member, give me money. To the right of that is exposure compensation, and that's on page three of 15. This is an easy way to adjust your image to be darker or brighter. More on this later, but for now, just leave this at zero. Next to that is going to be peaking display, located on page six of 12. This is a super helpful tool when using manual focus. It basically puts a color overlay on your display to show what's in focus. Next to that is peaking level, also on page six of 12, and this basically is the sensitivity of that focus peaking setting. The higher this level, the more color overlay you'll see. So let's move down to the bottom row and back over to the left side. I like to set this as my gamma display assist, which is on page 11 of 12. This basically adds some contrast and saturation to your display. It's helpful when you're using this and shooting a very flat picture profile. It doesn't apply this look to the video files that you're actually recording. It just changes the display on your camera and it sort of gives you an idea of what your video might look like if you added a color grade to the flat picture profile that you're currently filming with. Next to that is the skin effect on page five of 12. Basically, it's a filter for your face. And I got shitty skin, and I like to have this on low or medium, depending on my insecurity level at the time of filming. Sorry to disappoint you if we ever meet in real life. And next to that is white balance, located on page four of 12. We talked about this a little, but I like having this in the function menu to quickly access if I ever needed to adjust this when filming outside of my kitchen. Next to that is picture profile on page four of 12. And we talked about this already. And again, I have it in my function menu to quickly access and adjust. After that is ND filter on page two of 12. And this is used when shooting in bright environments. It's basically like sunglasses for your camera. Ask Google what an ND filter is to get more answers to your questions. And the last is shoot mode on page one of two. I think it was default, but I can quickly adjust between manual and the ZV-1 smartphone mode, which I'm gonna talk about later. So now that we have our camera completely configured with all of our custom buttons and best quality settings, I'm gonna set this up in my kitchen and show you how to easily adjust your exposure with manual settings. If you don't care how to use this $800 camera and you just wanna use it like a smartphone and go easy mode, you can skip this part. But I would recommend at least watching it so you can understand what I'm doing and maybe give it a try. So I'm gonna place my camera on a tripod and point it towards my kitchen. I think it would be helpful if you did this too, just to follow along with me while we make these adjustments together so you can better understand what's happening. Make sure that you got all of your lights and everything set how you would want it to look as if you were planning to film yourself. I'll power the camera on and just make sure that you're zoomed all the way out. 
Hit the C2 button with the little trash can on the back bottom of the camera and just make sure that your camera is not set to active stabilization mode because it'll kind of crop in a little bit on the image. Switch it to standard or off. Adjust your shot and framing so everything is how you'd like it. The back of your screen should have all of this information displayed. If it doesn't, hit the button on the top of that scroll wheel labeled DISP and it should toggle through the different display options. Turn this wheel on the back to adjust your shutter speed. If for some reason it's adjusting your aperture, turn the wheel all the way to the left till your aperture is at f1.8. Then press down on the bottom of the wheel and it should switch over to the shutter. I set my shutter speed to 100 just to start out and I'm going to be adjusting this later a lot after we lock in the ISO. People are gonna be telling you that your shutter speed has to be double the frame rate. So because I'm filming 24p, my shutter should be 1 50th. This is just a rule in filmmaking that I break all of the time. In a nutshell, when your shutter speed is double your frame rate, your video image will have a cinematic motion blur. However, this isn't a fucking Avengers movie and it's a cooking video on the internet. And honestly, the faster that your shutter is, the less blur that you're gonna get. And this can save you if you needed to take a screenshot of your video and use it as a thumbnail. Also, I prefer a lower f-stop, also known as aperture, for more background blur than I do a slower shutter for more motion blur. So now that I got my shutter at 100 and my aperture is at 1.8, I'm gonna hit the button on the right side of the turn wheel on the back of the camera, which we customized to be our ISO settings. Right now it should be set to auto. I'm gonna slowly scroll to the right and adjust this till my image is as bright as I would like it to be and then I'll press the big button in the middle of the camera to select that. Rule of thumb is that you wanna keep your ISO as low as possible. The higher the number gets, the more that you'll see what's called image noise or graininess in your footage. There have been times that I've had to crank this sucker to like 8,000 plus in a dimly lit restaurant though. But in my kitchen where I have control of my lights, I don't think I've ever had to take this above 4,000. Okay, so once you got your ISO aperture and shutter selected, you'll see this little MM at the bottom with a number next to this. This is your exposure meter, and usually you wanna keep this around 0.0, .0 but plus or minus 0.3, and maybe even plus or minus 0.7 in some cases might be okay, but 0.0, .0 is ideal. Just know that you can always adjust and fine tune your exposure a little bit when you're editing as well, so it doesn't have to be perfect in camera. But if your video is way overexposed, you're probably not going to be able to fix that. So now this is where I would personally only really be adjusting my shutter speed to get that to 0.0. .0. One small caveat about this camera is it has a variable aperture. What that means is when you zoom in, the aperture will change to 2.8 and the image is gonna get darker. So after you zoom in, adjust your shutter to get the exposure back to 0.0. .0. One rule you do not want to break is you don't want to drop your shutter speed lower than 1 1 30th. If you go lower than this, you'll get this crazy drunken strobe effect. So if you zoom in and your aperture is at 2.8 and your shutter speed is really low, like 1 1 30th, and your light meter is still reading a negative number or it looks dark, the first thing you'd want to do is try and make your lights brighter if possible. If that's not an option, you'll need to hit the right button on the turn wheel to get to your ISO settings and bring up your ISO a bit to get that meter back to 0.0. .0. Once you got that set up, you're pretty much good to go. And when you zoom out, it'll get a little bit brighter. So just turn the wheel on the back to the right to adjust your shutter and exposure back to zero. And if you zoom in, turn the wheel to the left and adjust your shutter to bring it back to 0.0. .0. You should really only be adjusting your shutter speed and maybe occasionally adjusting your ISO up or down. I recommend running a few tests, mess with your lighting and your settings, and film a few short clips of yourself. Maybe pretend that you're talking to the camera for a few, and then pretend to prep some food on a cutting board to see what that would look like and mess with your settings and adjust your exposure. And then maybe even try and pretend to cook at your stove with an empty pan or a pot. Then pop your SD card into your computer and take a look at what you're working with. Trust me, after a few recipes, you're not even gonna be thinking about the camera settings because you'll understand how to use them. You just gotta start filming and shooting and the more you use it, the more comfortable you'll get. The one time I will say you want your shutter speed to be at least 1 125th is when you're shooting 
or filming 120 frames per second. So you'll need to crank your lights or your ISO to compensate for your faster shutter speed. Okay, so if you wanna just turn your ZV-1 into a smartphone and wanna just simply adjust your brightness with one button, first we need to go back into the menu to customize that button. Back in the menu, let's go to tab two with the purple camera, scroll to page eight of nine, and the first options for photo mode, we wanna go down to the second one with the film strip and select that. Then we're gonna change button number two, the big one in the back. Scroll to page four of 17 and we're gonna select exposure compensation. Now back all the way out of your menu to the main screen where we can record a video and hit the button on the right of the wheel to bring up your ISO settings. Scroll all the way up and we're gonna switch this to auto. Hit the function or FM button on the back of the camera and then we'll scroll down to the bottom right and select exposure mode. We wanna switch this to aperture priority. So now your camera is set up to where the shutter speed and the ISO will automatically change, but your aperture is gonna stay the same, so you'll get that nice blurred background, which is probably the reason you bought this camera in the first place. To adjust your exposure, you simply just gotta tap that big button in the middle of the scroll wheel to bring up your exposure compensation, and scroll it to the left if you wanna make your image darker, and scroll it to the right if you wanna make it brighter. Once you lock in what you want, the camera will do its best to keep it there, even if you zoom in or out, and even if you just turned your lights off completely. This ZV-1 smartphone mode is also great for people who might be filming outside, where they're constantly dealing with the sun popping in and out of the clouds and affecting their exposure. Now that we have all of your settings dialed in and you know how to use your camera, I got another video with a bunch of accessories I'd recommend to get the most out of your ZV-1.